Yeah, I've gone through some sanitation products over the years. This is just a small portion. Yeah, of course. There's always a dog in my picture. I'd like to go over a few products I've used over the years and my experience with them and share the pros and cons from my homeowner's perspective. Now here we have a bag of shock, three inch chlorinating pool tablet, and then the Zappet, which is a chlorine granular equivalent to shock. What I look for is the chemical makeup in the description. For example, we have this three-in-one chlorinating skimmer tablet, which deliberately tells you to throw it in the skimmer. Ingredients breakdown. 47% hypochlorite and 52% other chemicals. Why don't they list them? I don't see anything on the bucket that says there's any cyanuric acid in here. So I don't even know what's in it. Now let's compare the shock. Same company. 56% hypochlorite. We're getting better. And again, other ingredients not listed. Zap it and forget it. Active ingredient, 73% calcium hypochlorite. Same percentage on the product label. So let's look at the similarities. Shock and Zappet are both in granular form. This brand is at 56% hypochlorite. Most other brands are at 68%. But let's just say you could find a bag that's at 73% and you purchased 50 one pound bags, that would be equivalent to this bucket. So the pros of Shock is convenience. Then we have the trichlor tabs, which is a form of chlorine, and it also has cyanuric acid, which acts as a sunscreen to prevent chlorine loss. I can't see around the side, but the trichlor is at 99%. Other ingredients is at 1%. And available chlorine is 90. The shock bag doesn't state available chlorine. Zap it says 70% available chlorine. I'm trying to compare this to hypochlorite is a whole different game. So the trichlor is the strongest form of chlorination. But what they're failing to tell you in the description is a good portion of this puck contains sarinaric acid. It's a six ounce tab. So three ounces is sarinaric acid. Question on the table. If that has about three ounces of chlorinating power, let's compare it to Zappet, which does not contain sarinaric acid. Let's get six ounces of Zappet that delivers at 70% versus three ounces of this at a delivery of 90%. Which would win? I'm going to test that in the next video. Let's talk sarinaric acid. Same brand, different year. Clearly states 100% sarinaric acid. Which leads us to this one. It says conditioner for stabilizing of chlorinated pool water. Nowhere on this bag does it state there's sarinaric acid in it. So the next time I go to the pool store, I'm going to ask them point blank, what ingredient is in there? And they'll probably say, oh, it's sarinaric acid. And I'd be like, well, how come companies do not list it? And they'll say, oh, I don't know. So should you use tablets or granulars? Use both. Let the water tell you what it needs through testing and visual. Here we have a couple test kits, dip strips and droplet. 
However, this one doesn't have the cyanuric acid option. For convenience, I've got a glass of water from the pool. And you just dip it, let it sit upright for 15 seconds, and compare. So the pH is good. The chlorine is at 3. Alkalinity is good. And the bottom chart here, which is the cyanuric acid, they refer to as stabilizer. And that looks like it's good. The ideal range is between 30 and 50. So with this scenario, we don't need any more stabilizer, which means we wouldn't use the trichlor, we'd go with the granular. Now keep in mind, when you use hypochlorite, it does have a tendency to raise the pH, but we have some room on the pH level. So allowing this chart to be your guide will tell you exactly which chemical is needed. In my case, I have a chemical for each one of these, which optimizes the balance of the water. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about delivery of the trichlor. Tablets are convenient. You load up the floater and your pool is being chlorinated while you're doing other things. I just mentioned floaters. Let's talk about that. I'm going to use this as a tablet because I don't need any more stabilizer. Now I'm not going to preach about putting tabs in a skimmer. As long as your pump's running, you're good. And when I first got my pool, I thought, what a better place to put it. You got the water flow going through, dissolving them, and uh, I'd load that thing up. But what I experienced over time is when the pool pump would shut off in the evening, the chlorinating tablets would still be dissolving and you'd have a strong concentration of chlorine right here in this unit. And it's hard on the plastics, makes things brittle. I was replacing hoses, pull hoses. I replaced the bearings in my pump system, front and back. And another thing I noticed was there'd be like this white film that would float out into the pool and hug the liner. And then I had like a bleach line around the liner. That's when I switched over to the granulars, mixing in the bucket, tossing in the pool. Speaking of chlorine making plastic brittle, that brings me to this floater, which you can see is all distorted. And one time, I went to pick up a bucket that I use to mix hypochlorite in over time and it just separated right in half. It wasn't a straight line but it looked like a hot knife through butter. The best type of chlorine delivery is an inline chlorine feeder. It's after the filtration and it's hard piped in and it's a canister and you load up your tablets, set the desired strength and you're good. We're all familiar with the floater, right? Oh look, there's a puck already inside. So then you got this drop down. And then you adjust the strength by turning the sleeve. And then let it float away. Now you see how it's hugging the side? You might want to tie it off because that could have a tendency to stain the liner. Or if you have an in-ground pool with built-in steps, don't let it hover over the steps and you don't want it sucking up in the skimmer neither. We're losing it. Come back. Come back. It's sinking.
I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Any questions, comments, leave down below.